Okay, if you're like me, one of the things that drew you to the Mossberg 590 was the fact that it was able to accommodate a, a bayonet. Real world uh, applications, maybe not the most ideal thing um, for home defense, but just uh, I just kind of like the notion that I could stick a big pointy thing on the end of my shotgun. Um, but the problem comes about is uh, is while this fits just fine with the old M7, which was what they were issuing back in my day when I was in the Marine Corps, um, and I believe the M9 that the Army uses will fit on there too, but I've had some people can tell me that there's issues with the M9. I, I can't speak from experience, just going by what I've been told. But as you can see, the M7 fits on there just fine. But, you know, and I know we had issues with the M M7 back in the day too. They were pretty brittle and if you weren't careful you could snap them too just as easily but uh, anyway I like the idea of having a pointy stick on my shotgun so that was why I per personally like the Mossberg so much when I bought it. Well I love the 870 don't get me wrong that's what I, I carried the one when I was in the Marine Corps on guard duty a few times and uh, I've always liked the platform there's just some ergonom there's also some ergonomic issues that I like about the Mossberg better than than the, uh, the 870. Again, they're both great shotguns. I'm not going to get into a bait about that. But the 870 didn't allow you to put a pointy stick on the end of it. And if, uh, but the problem came about, we know the M7 fit just fine, and we know that uh, the Army's uh, M9 fit fine, but what about us jarheads? who like this new, uh, the new Ontario blades, the new Ontario bayonet that the Marine Corps issues to, uh, to their troops. The problem comes with this is that if you look closely, the handle of the Ontario is actually slightly longer, maybe about an eighth of an inch or so, give or take. I'm sure somebody knows the exact number out there, but but that's the number I got, just just swagging it. Anyway, it can go on here because it uses the same bayonet lug at the end. But there's a huge, huge gap right here. I don't know if you can see that, and it doesn't lend itself well. It doesn't see so the only really thing that the the bayonets attach you to is the, the lug back here at the end. Not ideal, but you know I wanted this bayonet because, well, you know I'm a marine, and uh, even though it does, it is bigger than the K bar. I just like that that idea of the bigger blade. Even compared this the K bar to the M7, you can see the a huge difference. So I'm liking the idea that I can put this on a shotgun, but as you can see it doesn't fit very well because of the gap up here so there's been a lot of talk back and forth on the internet about this and uh, I think I found the ideal answer I mean I've seen people come up with ideas they'll put shims on here uh, one guy actually took some washers and just cut them all up and made, but it looked so I mean it worked but it just didn't look that cool to me just look kind of hokey and kind of like Billy Bob, something Billy Bob would do back in the barn. Uh, but admittedly, I had my little little um, lapse of judgment. I was considering taking taking the cap. We got almost got away from me. Taking the end cap and use it. These are this is threaded, of course, for a sling swivel. And I was thinking about taking. A bolt with a similar thread or a sling swivel, just removing the, sli the swivel part, the bolt, and putting a couple of washers in there to stand off enough to meet to meet this dimension right here. But again, I thought that would look kind of hillbilly, so you know, which it would have worked. It would probably look better than running the washers that somebody had ground down and made to fit. But I wanted something a little more, uh, a little cleaner than that. So that's where GG and G comes in. They've made they make a lot of different products. Um, in this case here, it's a 
a ring. It's designed to fit actually over the magazine and then you put the cap over it, the magazine cap, and holds it in place. They also go to the extra engineering of putting a little button in there too, mimicking the button on the barrel to help hold the cap in place meeting up with these ridges which I thought was an excellent idea and trust me when you get this on here and you tighten that down hand tight unless you have gorilla hands it's not going to back off under firing you'll probably need a set of channel locks to get it off of there um, I know because I did <laughs> anyway uh, you'll probably notice by now that I've done some something here the problem came about when you put that ring on, it was so thick that it wouldn't allow the bayonet. If you notice, there's a little divot on the bottom here. That's to accommodate the handle of the bayonets. This had just enough of a lip on it that it wouldn't allow the bayonet to fit without doing some modifications. So I took my Dremel tool and I actually marked it best I could and I've you know, sand it a little bit, so I'm going to re, re, uh, I'm probably going to recoat this. That's for another episode, but along with doing some other work to my, my shotgun. But uh, for now, that just goes over like this. And um, just tighten it down hand tight. You can hear it making contact with the button there. And trust me, you're not, it's not coming off. It's on there really good. And see, it looks a lot cleaner than some hack job that somebody might have done with some washers or, you know, shims or whatnot. And then you would have to deal with that every time you took the, had to assemble the, the system to get, get it clean. But again, you will need a set of channel locks, you know, uh, protected with a rag, of course, but some channel locks to get that off of there. But that ain't going anywhere. Now, GG and G make several uh, options for this. Uh, sling uh, um, sling options. This I chose the quick disconnect because I'm running uh, with this this Mossberg setup. This is my I decided to go with the um, Magpul uh, two point to one point sling, so I can convert uh, go from one point to two point. And uh, I'm also, as you can see, I'm running other Magpul furniture. I'm running Magpul furniture too, front and rear. And I really like it. But that's another. That's another. That's I put that on in an earlier video. Um, but anyway, as you can see now. Oh, let's get this. See, as this point will not swivel. It actually locks into place. You can lock it like this, or you can lock it like this. Either way, it's great. It's great. It won't let your magazine. Uh, it won't let the uh, sling bunch up or or twist or anything like that. Now, when we try to fix the Ontario bayonet, look at that. Perfectly smooth, no problems. A lot more solid. It's not going anywhere. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, you're not stuck having to get this exact one right here. GG and G makes uh, one with a rail on here, so you can mount a. You could uh, very similar to this. You could take the and mount a a flashlight up here. And what's cool about the flashlight one is uh, it's a Piccadilly rail, Piccadilly rail. It's actually got two sling mounts on either side, just hoops, little hoops. So if you have one of the little pincher type that you can just clip on or whatever won't work with a quick disconnect but I already had a flashlight so this is why I went with this route they also have uh, a solid sling uh, no quick disconnects or anything like that it would it'd be similar to to this right here just a, a slot and uh, but anyway you have several options go to their website you can find them on Amazon you can uh, I believe eBay even has them too. GG and G accessories, uh, shotgun accessories, and I think they make them for just about any shotgun. But I really like this. It looks a lot cleaner, and I like the fact that I can now use my Ontario bayonet on the end of my shotgun, so it's much nicer. Uh, also, for you guys, that you, some, I'm sure somebody's noticed this. Please don't. Um, 
if you've, you've noticed, don't give me a hard time, but yes, there is a conflict right here. My flashlight is on this side, the sling mount is on this side. Without the sling in place, it doesn't hamper that at all. For home defense, I'd probably run in single point anyway, but for carry out in the field, I'd probably run two point. And uh, yes, when I turn the flashlight on, it shadows this, and I have it actually adds a little shadow out on the out there. But it doesn't it doesn't obstruct so much as just sl puts a slight shadow on there. Obviously, when you put this on, you know, put the sling on, you run in the sling, you could totally screw up uh, the whole thing there. So that's my next dilemma. Do I relocate the flashlight again back to the to the other side and maybe get one of the ones that has a button on this side so I can actually, I just like this setup so much better because I can activate it with my thumb without having to take my hand off the foregrip or try to reach around and engage it with my forefinger on the other side like I was previously. So I just like this so much better. Anyway, but the real point of this video was to address this and I think I did so. And also what's cool about it is you can still, should you desire, you can still put the M7 on there should you desire. So, but since I'm a jarhead, I want the Marine Corps knife on there. Again, I don't know if it's very practical for home defense, but I just like the idea of the big pointy stick. On, on my shotgun. Anyway, I hope you this enjoyed uh, and I hope this is informative.